Okay, guys, find your way to your seats. If you're coming in, come on, guys. I'm ready to start this thing. There's probably more seats here on the sides, up front. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our second safe driving presentation of the school year. Uh, my name is Dr. Durda. I'm the principal here at the senior high school. Uh, Mr. Salapak, one of our assistant principals, and Officer Yaney um, really have led the work behind our safe driving presentation. Uh, Mr. Salapak is unfortunately unable to join us here this afternoon. He did give us very specific expectations of what we need to review with each and every one of you. Obviously, safety and security is the most important part of what we do as a school. Officer Yaney is going to go through the presentation with all of you uh, this afternoon. We know out of respect for your time, we need to cover a lot of very, very important information, but we also want to make, be mindful that a lot of you are joining us from practices, from band camp, from different activities. So we're going to base it off of how engaged you are throughout this afternoon's presentation. So I know that you guys do this all the time anyways, but the cell phones should be away. We're going to go through as efficiently and effectively as we can. Again, while knowing that safety and security is our highest priority here at the senior high school. Before I turn things over uh, to Officer Yaney, again, this is the second safe driving presentation. I just checked the Google form. We have 486 applicants applications for parking permits. So for those of you that, that have friends that are close to getting their driver's license, um, it is on a first come first serve basis. So we appreciate that you guys filled out the Google form that you're participating this afternoon. And our last session will be next Friday, um, the 18th. Real quick overview of the agenda. Again, you all know, most of you know me by now. Officer Yaney is our school resource officer here at the senior high school. He will be running the presentation with all of you this afternoon. Um, he will go over again, driving expectations. I do want to emphasize, it is a privilege to drive to school. This is one of the perks of being a student at the senior high school. I hear a lot from NAI that students can't drive when they're at the intermediate high school. That is correct. They're not able to drive at NAI. When you join us here at Nash, that is a privilege that we have for our students. And with any privilege, there is a responsibility associated with that. Okay, so please know um, this is a topic that we do take very serious. So for those of you that were with me in the orientation session earlier today, a very different message was being shared because when we're talking safety, security, we, we need to make sure that we have all hands on deck. Following the presentation this afternoon, there is going to be a team of about eight to ten staff members that are going to be stationed in the cafeteria. We are going to work through getting you guys your parking permits, again, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So as you guys at, wrap up in the auditorium, a lot of us are going to be in the cafeteria waiting for you. Make sure that you get into line so that we can move you guys through that process um, as quickly as possible. I do want to start with our identity and focus here at Nash because this is what drives every single thing that we do. This is the expectation that I have as the principal of the senior high school for our staff and for our students. And I know because I've seen it, I've lived it, I've seen you guys do it, I've seen our staff do it. Our expectation is that we deeply love and care for each and every student, each and every staff member, while relentlessly pursuing excellence in all that we do. That means the way that you enter the campus, the way that you exit the campus. That means the way that you drive through the parking lots as we have band camp, heat acclimation in Newman Stadium. We have a lot of things that are going on in campus. Your safety, again, 
is what is most important to us. So we appreciate your full engagement during this afternoon's presentation. And I will see you guys out in the cafeteria after Officer Yaney goes through some very important information with you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Durda. As she said, I am Officer Carl Yaney. I am your school resource officer. It'll be my second year here at Nash. And I will go through this uh, driving presentation with you guys today. We did this once again last year uh, for those who, who are seniors. It helped out quite a bit. Uh, we did a pretty good job last year, I thought, of, um, of safety and uh, getting out of the parking lots. Wasn't perfect, um, but hopefully we'll improve upon that. So uh, basically, safety is your number one priority. Uh, they'll say it a ton of times. It is uh, one of those things that you never think about because no one wants to get into an accident. It, you're just not thinking, right? And then it happens and you wish you could take it back. It does take a quite a bit of time to get your mind to think, you know, maybe I'll be late, but I don't need to rush it, especially in the winter. Bad things can happen, and you don't really know what the extent of that is until something does. So if it happens to you, when your friend, just someone you know about, hear about, or you read in the paper, uh, it's evidence that it does happen. So that's why a lot of people say safety is the number one priority. All right, general expectations. All this stuff, most of these are laws, but because all of you guys are in one area, hardly anywhere else in the north has the amount of vehicles enter and exit one place at one time that we do at the senior high school. So it itself is, is just an anomaly. That's why these things are important, is because all the good driving practices are put into a scientific experiment every single day here at the high school. And that's how we determine what we need to do. All right, so most of these here are just almost self-explanatory. The ones I want to hit on are mostly, all right, mostly the first, we'll just hang, we'll cover it here. Be patient, right? So you're going to learn a lot about time management. Specifically, how I got to where I am today, I had to use reverse planning to go I need to go to the police station. I need to get all my stuff. I need to get my car. I need to know what the time it's going to take to get up there. I know it's lunchtime. More people are on the roads at lunchtime because they need to go out and get lunch. And also, there's construction right outside the town of McCallis Hall. All of those things I put into my mind to get me here on time and get here early so I can test out everything, what I need to do. Basic way to do this, I briefed it last year. Take whatever time that you think you need in a normal day where you get up and eat breakfast and shower and do all that, add 10 minutes, all right? That makes you not have to rush. You're not worried about anything. If something happens on the road, you're not worried about it. You're not rushing. You're not trying to turn left into our southern entrance on Perry. Um, so 10 minutes. You start with there. If you need more time, then do that. But that's a good place to start. All right. School starts at 7.23 for those who weren't here last year. Um, it is pretty early. What happens is, so first bell rings at 7.19, then 7.23. If you're not there after that, then start marking late. I will work a crosswalk or someone from the staff will work the crosswalk, the main crosswalk. I'm the one who locks the south doors, all right? So you do have a little bit of a wiggle room. However, once you know that it's past 723, you're going to be late anyway, right? So obviously give yourself some time ahead of time. And in inclement weather, snow, rain, anything like that, it's going to take more time. So you just know that you have to at least be on time. All right, parking tags. So what you're going to buy in a little bit looks exactly like this, right? Don't lose them. Don't give them to friends. Don't do any of that because I have to keep track of all that stuff, right? It's real easy. Just place them in your windshield. I think we got a picture of it facing out. Uh, it is surprising how many people can't do this correctly, uh, but there's a picture of it. It really does help me. It, it allows me to quickly go through the parking lot and look at what cars are supposed to be here and what cars stick out, right? That's all it is. That's what it's made to do, all right? And a lot of the times, if, say, your vehicle's running, 
or someone hit your vehicle or whatever it is, they don't need me to identify it. That's what that tag does. We have a database here. It allows any staff member to quickly go, oh, that's your vehicle. We can get them out of class and do whatever we need to do or notify you, hey, go to lunch, fix this with your vehicle, or come see me, right? You don't need me to physically go and run your plate. That's why it's there. It does help well quite a bit. But if you don't display it, you know, they're no good. All right, entering NASH. So uh, last year, uh, not last year, two years ago, we had quite a bit of uh, accidents at the, at the main entrance. I think we alleviated some of that because we did, ex we basically changed the timing on the front light to have a longer left turn arrow. We did that at the beginning of last year. I think it worked out. Um, but anything like that, if you think that that turn arrow is too short, it should be around 45 seconds now in the morning, um, let me know. Uh, that is, or used to be, the main problem at that main entrance, is that people would try to get in that left turn at the end of it. So basically there's a, there's a green arrow, we'll see you later, then it goes to a steady green where you have to yield to the oncoming traffic. Basically what they would try to do is they cut in while southbound traffic was coming over, or they weren't paying attention, and they just drive into someone, and you get T-boned. Luckily that hasn't happened uh, this past year, and hopefully it won't happen this year. All right, we redid this video for this year. Let's see if it will play. Every school day, nearly 700 student drivers enter and exit the campus. Student safety is our utmost priority and one of our biggest concerns regarding driving. One of the largest issues is the left turn into the main entrance from northbound Route 19 or Perry Highway. Please note that this turning lane does not always have a green arrow. While the green arrow gives drivers in that lane the right of way, the arrow soon turns to a green light. When the light turns green, the opposing southbound traffic at the intersection also sees a green light. If you attempt to turn into campus, when you see the green light, it is vitally important that you take note of the opposing traffic, as they too will have a green light. A single absent-minded mistake or an ill-advised decision to turn into traffic can have frightening results. If you're a driver, you are responsible for the safety of everyone in your vehicle, and you can affect the safety of everyone else on the road. Simple concepts such as taking your time and erring on the side of caution can prevent accidents and injury. Okay, I think we went over all this. Surprisingly, there's a whole lot of not turning off your lights or vehicles. Happens almost daily. All right, exiting campus. So, uh, I'm gonna be out there or a designated representative at the crosswalk again. So basically what happens is, is that a whole bunch of people wanna leave one area at the same time. And what I see almost daily is that vehicles, when they're leaving their parking spots, they are coming extremely close to other students walking, right? Or um, going too fast, either one. We haven't had it happen, an actual pedestrian accident here, but rest assured, if it does happen in some way, it's gonna be bad, right? It is not a fun thing to watch a, anyone, especially a student who should be safe here at school, get run over by a fellow student, right? And luckily it hasn't happened. However, the idea is, is that when you're not paying attention is when it could happen, right? Because no one is going to willingly do it just because. But if you're not paying attention, right, your mind's on something else, or you're just trying to get to your job or practice or whatever, you're not paying attention, you're not gonna see that person, right? And then an accident's gonna happen. All right. So 15, 20 minutes, that is about right. 
we get everyone out here uh, pretty quickly. Um, and I don't think we have too many problems with that. All right, Nash and the Am. This is where I, if, if anyone has any questions or if no one's been up here, obviously you did get here today, just ask, literally yell, and I will answer it here. This is so everyone understands. Many of you guys have done this all past year, um, but a few of you have not done it. Okay, so you are looking north. This is uh, oriented correctly, so the top is north, and the top yellow arrow there is the main entrance to Nash. The bottom arrow is the southern entrance, which is an also an exit. So the southern entrance exit, that the lower arrow there, you cannot take a left turn off of Perry Highway. All right, I know it's gonna happen. If you do it, and either I catch you doing it, or you get into an accident, cause an accident, the accident's gonna be your fault, or, and you will be cited, or you'll just be cited by me. All right, it is probably about I don't even know if it's any faster because we always have uh, spaces available in those parking lots. It, I think we did do a very good job beginning everyone in the main entrance. Uh, if you are traveling southbound, so and you actually would rather bypass the main entrance, go to the south entrance, take a right and go into one of those parking lots down there, perfectly fine. It doesn't happen too much, but uh, that is available for you in the morning. All right. All right, so that's the main entrance. I think most people know it. Um, what I want to say on the main entrance, right, if none of you guys have seen it, basically there are two lanes to where you come in that merge into one, right? What it's designed to do is have a designated lane for those who are northbound on 19 to take a left into campus and those who are southbound on 19 to take a right into campus. Maintain their lanes and they don't hit each other. So if anyone's wondering, they haven't seen that, that's why that's there, right? You will sometimes see people drive into the wrong lane. It happens, especially uh, you know if, if they can't see where the markers are, if there's snow, it's rainy, uh, basically they will go where they know their barrier isn't. So just be paying attention for that. All right, there it is. How about that? Two lanes inbound. All right, so this is the southern exit entrance. All there is right there is a small one, two, three, four, five. It looks like a, a hexagon in a weird shape. Uh, that is the entrance that you would come in if you're turning right off of Perry Highway going southbound, and the entrance that you can turn right leaving campus onto Perry Highway and only right. You cannot take a left out of that southern exit entrance. All right, so you wanna stay left. When you first enter in the entrance, you wanna stay left. If you go right, you'll be going where all the staff goes and around the whole building. Um, so left, either of the two left lanes is where you wanna to be to get to all the student parking. So starting last year, we blocked this off. I will do it at a certain point in the time, uh, just because the amount of people walking into school, I think it's, uh, it worked out very well last year. I don't think it impeded too much. Um, so just do not go through that. There will be cones there. Please do not go through my cones. So you either go right in the athletic lot, and that is the route in, and then you go into the south athletic doors. There's the athletic entrance. Or you can or you can come up and take one of the two lefts, or if you're coming in the southern entrance, one of the two rights into the tennis court parking lot. This is where all the parking usually is available. Whenever some kid comes in here and says, I'm sorry, I had to park on the lawn because there wasn't any spaces, I pull up one of the cameras and I see 30 spaces. This is what happens is I understand is that in the morning, you're gonna go quickly and look for a spot you can't find when you're gonna park, I understand that, but there has been one day that we ran out of actual parking where I had to park kids on other places. I do that myself personally because I know that'll be a problem. That is when we're hosting outside agencies, people, you know, we don't have, we have more than what the normal populace of the school is during that day. And tracking it way ahead of it, I'll take care of you on those days, okay? But if you need to find a spot, go back here into the, uh, into the middle of that lot. 
and then you walk up. Uh, you know where the crosswalk is. That's where you'll see me. That's where you should cross. There it is. And still through the athletic lot. All right, so exiting. Most of our traffic, it's easier to uh, get a good steady flow of traffic, even without the buses, uh, through the main entrance. If that's where you exit, you can turn left or right. You can go north or south through the main entrance. The southern exit, you can only go south or turning right. The buses, you have to yield to them, and they will be a little bit aggressive, making sure that they can get out. It's just because they have to make time, and obviously they're dropping off a ton of kids. And they move pretty quickly. So even if you, know, you have a line of five buses in front of you, most of the time it only won't add a couple minutes to your, to your uh, departure. And, all right, so obviously all the staff is parked in the rear and in the front. If you are trying to get out quickly, and obviously there's a cameras, there's cameras everywhere, but people will sometimes go behind Nash to try to get out of the amount of kids waiting in line to leave through one of the main exits. What we're assuming is going to happen at some point because they will go fast enough because they don't want anyone to see them is an accident will happen. If it's not with the teacher or one of your fellow students or whomever, could be with a parent, could be with anyone who's here at the end of the day. Um, that's what we don't want, we do not want to see. I'll just uh, address this here too, is that obviously the parking privileges can be revoked and you can get to a point to where, you know, there's criminal stuff. If we, if, if we tell you to not do something, that'd be me as a police officer, right? and it is against the law when you do it, the next time that you do it, it kind of forces us to have to result to citations or you know, we can petition for you to have your uh, license revoked, your actual driver's license for certain things. Obviously, we don't want to get to that point. All right, so north on 19, this is how you get out if you want to take a left out of the main entrance. There is two lanes. Just be careful. We've had a few incidents where buses, if you notice how long they are, they have a weird turning radius. So let's say that a bus was in the far lane there, the one that has the up arrow and the left turn arrow. If they are going to take that turn, they will take it wider because they're longer. So if you are in the inside left turning lane and you hug the right side, right, you're over almost on the middle line, it is a possibility that you could collide with the bus or the bus could collide with you. Only happened once last year, but just something to take uh, some note of, all right, you can only turn right from uh, southern exit on to 19. We already covered that. All right, so attendance and being late. All right, if you're late, everyone's late all the time, right? Halfway through the last year, we started tracking it, and they did a good job of it, right? It was a problem, though. There was a lot of kids who were late all the time, like all the time, right? And a lot of them didn't care, which is fine. You stacked up detentions on detentions, right? That's fine. What we do not want to have happen is that you're late, you're so concerned about having to do stay after school or do a Saturday that you get into an accident, right? So last year, in the first two weeks, we had two accidents that I can remember off the top of my head. One kid flipped a car with his other friend inside of it. It was a good amount far away from here, but he was still driving home from school after school. And we had a kid pretty close to here go into a concrete uh, jersey barrier, right, trying to turn onto his, onto his road. Obviously, speed was most likely a factor there. Those sorts of things are absolutely as painful as you can think for kids who have just gotten to school, right? They have the whole school year in front of them, and they could very easily injure themselves to the point to where they never might be the same again. Right? or injured someone else, either in their car or someone else on the road. So those are the ones, those are the things that we're trying to avoid. If you are late, most of the teachers here will, you know, one or two minutes, I'm sure that they don't care so much, right? If you are late, everyone here understands enough to go, hey, if it's bad weather, we understand that, right? There's, there's, uh, Things that we can do regarding that. Something bad happened to you? Fine. 
you know, it, it is what it is. Do not cause an accident. Do not be involved in an accident. Do not uh, endanger yourself or anyone else just because you're late. All right, if you're involved in a minor vehicle accident or a significant vehicle accident, you, by PA state law, you're just basically supposed to exchange information. I am here for every single person who comes to the school. The school pays me to be here. I don't have to be here. Like, they choose to pay me to be here. So I'm here to help you, work for you. All you have to do is say, hey, I'm in a motor vehicle accident. Um, you don't even have to call 911. Someone can just come get me. I'm out in the parking lot. Uh, in the morning and in the afternoon. If there is a, a serious vehicle accident, you can just tell someone or you can call 911 and I will still respond to it, okay? So if you are on your way to Nash, obviously, and you're involved in an accident, you should call 911, okay? That, at a minimum, I know, I can see the name. And regardless of anything else, making any other notifications, we know where you are just because you reported a vehicle accident. Okay, going backwards. All right, so you can also buy temporary parking permits. If you see any of our guys in the, in the security office per day, it's a buck, I believe, and they will get you hooked up with one. Um, I think there's sorts of limits on how many days you could buy them, but don't worry about that. Come in, uh, if you need to bring your vehicle, we'll get you hooked up with a pass. Uh, look, if, if for whatever reason, we don't want to want a whole bunch of kids leaving school to do whatever with their vehicles, right? It's in the book that no one's supposed to do that. That doesn't happen all the time. But if you're saying, I left my water bottle in the car, I need to go get it, expect that we will say no. That's just how it is, right? If I have nothing else to do and I want to get outside and I feel like drive, walking to get you your water bottle, maybe I'll do that, right? We do not, uh, it's not safety prudent to have a whole bunch of people going to their cars at all times, right? When it becomes the norm that you see students walking around at their cars, I can't distinguish someone who's out there doing something that they shouldn't be doing to someone who's going and getting their water bottle. That's why we have a policy that when you park your car and you come in for the day, that you're in for the day. Okay. So, can your vehicle be searched? Yes, it can be. Either, uh, depending on what it is, off campus or on. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of laws that are pertaining to vehicles and searching. No one should bring anything that is, let's just say contraband, so you've got drugs, guns, weapons, baseball bats, unless you're, you know, I guess coming to your first baseball practice. Knives. Uh, anything that can be deemed to be dangerous as far as like chemicals, right? Um, that should not be in your uh, car or alcohol. So just know that basically we do do a whole bunch of uh, different things here. You know, we do have dog searches. Um, just do not bring any of that stuff here, all right? I'm not a, you know, a huge stickler for what I don't know what goes on outside these walls. If I find out, that's one thing, but if I don't, I'm not gonna dwell over it. It doesn't come here. Because this is six to eight hours of your day, and a lot of other people are here too, doing the same thing you're doing. And, you know, they do not wanna feel like there's a possibility that someone's bringing stuff onto a school campus that they shouldn't be doing. And we've had it here. I know it's gonna happen, but we'll deal with it when it does. All right, so there's a whole bunch of uh, policies. These are like, they are written out. They've thought of a whole bunch of stuff that was related to driving um, and safety. So if they need to, uh, they will address it uh, to the letter of the law because it is actually all in, uh, in policies that you can read. All right, does anyone have any questions? Thank you for coming up to the front to sit down so uh, no one is sitting here. Please, in an orderly fashion, <laughs> exit. <laughs>